The federal government has put on hold the planned resumption of federal schools. It also stops students from participating in the West African Senior Certificate Examinations, scheduled for between August 4 and September 5. The Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, disclosed this to State House correspondents at the end of a meeting of the Federal Executive Council, presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari. The Minister of State for Education, Emeka Wanjuba, had during the press briefing by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 on Monday announced that the 2020 WASE exams uh, conducted by WAEC would hold between August, 5, August 4 and September 5. Joining us live is Folawe Omikunle, CEO, Teach for Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. It's a pleasure. Uh, there's been a lot of arguments and counter-arguments about the decision of the federal government. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm, I would say that I'm, I'm pleased about the decision that the government has um, come up with. And, you know, initially I wasn't for schools resuming anytime soon just because we were, were clearly unprepared to resume schools. Um, I didn't think that we had put the right measures in place. I mean, given the context of schools across Nigeria and the guidelines that had been initially shared obviously would only apply to private schools if private schools, you know, because private schools were better positioned to meet all of those requirements, but clearly our public schools, which is where majority of our children attend and our students attend, weren't equipped and prepared to reopen the schools. And so hearing this for me was just, it was, it was one of those um, decisions where we were on, on a path to making a mistake and we corrected that because it could have led into a disaster for the government to quickly come back, I guess, then meet with stakeholders and really truly understand what it would take for us to reopen schools, even for, just for the terminal, um, terminal students. And so I'm pleased that we're, we're back at this stage now where we're actually saying, you know what, it's just not safe for us to have our students go back to school, how, whether we're having just some of them or not. How do it's you just think, not safe to have trans students. How do you back. feel this might affect the academic year? So, you know, I think everybody is talking about the academic year. And the truth is, yes, there is going to be loss of learnings. Like there are other countries who are dealing with the same issue. But I think the issue here and, you know, what has, I think the lesson that this pandemic has shown to us is the lesson we failed to learn about the inequality that always existed in our education system, the inequity that always existed in our education system, just how, how unprepared our education system was for any turbulence. And I think those existed before now. And I think what the epidemic has done is it's just shone, it's shone, it's shone light on this. It's amplified all of these issues that existed. The countries that are thriving and finding ways to continue to continue engaging their students, to continue ensuring their students are learning, those countries had certain things in place. You know, I think about this situation and I've had conversations between yesterday and today where people have said, oh, why can't we just have these exams done online? Why can't we continue teaching remotely? But the truth of the matter is, there all of this investment that we ought to have done in our education system, you know, amongst our teachers around how we've equipped them, how we've equipped our schools, you know, how we've provided devices to ensure that this could happen, how we've trained students actually to be able to write tests and exams online. So it's like all of this range of activities or events that ought to have happened that that put us in a place where if we're not in a physical school or a physical building, then education can happen and, you know, learning can take place or exams can take place. Okay, and, and, and what would you say quickly to parents, you know, that have concerns um, about this, you know, inconsistency uh, at a time like this? What do you think parents should do? Parents just need to continue supporting the learning process. I think more than anything, I can't imagine the trauma, you know, that the students are going through. I can't imagine being in, you know, SS3 now, preparing for exams, and then the back and forth on, you know, you, whether you're writing it now or not. I think what is critical now, what is most important, is just for our students to continue being engaged and to continue learning. You know, exams, and one of the things that I always say is, you know, we can, we can make up for lost lessons but we can never make up for lost lives. And so parents should just continue finding ways to keep engaging their students. This is a time for them to learn other things, engage, continue to, you know, just broaden their horizon and continue to prepare for the exam. But parents should just continue supporting students in this and, you know, in preparation for when they're able to write exams and when they're able to put the, right, the measures in place. 
to ensure that schools are safe for the students to take the exams. But now they should just continue preparing. They have all the time to continue preparing for the same content, you know, that they would be writing the exam on. So I think parents should just continue supporting their students and their children okay. you know, in preparation for the exam. All right. Uh, like you said, we can make up for lost lessons, but we can't make up for lost uh, life. Thank you very much for Lawe Omikunle for joining us, and we hope to speak with you again as quickly as possible. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.